Welcome back everyone to another Kerbal Space Program video. So in the last video I had asked what kind of stuff you'd like to see and we did have one commenter getting back saying uh, that he'd like to see us going above what the SR-71 spy plane did. And for those of you who don't know, the SR-71 got up to a record height of 25,929 meters. So we will try to beat that here. Now what you see me kind of pointing out right here, I'm actually recording the audio after the video, so not everything's going to line up, just makes things more interesting for you as you watch. But uh, anyways, uh, we do have very large wingspan, kind of copy that idea off the U-2 spy plane. A uh, very large wingspan means you're going to get a lot of lift, there's a lot of intakes as well, so we're not running out of air. And possibly the most important part anytime you're trying to do a high altitude aircraft is the engine pre-coolers. They will significantly increase your high altitude performance. So we'll go ahead and get started. And just a PSA, if you ever want to take off, it's a good idea to take off the brakes before igniting the engines, as we did not observe just now. But we're still good, moving on, and going to see how this one goes up. Good lift so far. So nice natural lift off the runway. Didn't really have to pull back at all, so we'll go ahead and get into a steeper climb though and see what oh nope. No. Yeah. <laughs> So moving on to this one, uh, it's the same design, just we're going to pilot it a bit smarter. I'll go ahead and start those afterburners on. Uh, just so you know, part of piloting is you don't want to pull up your plane too quickly, like I just did just now, but uh, the thing was is that you got, um, anyways, you can't pull back when you're going too quickly, that puts too much drag on your body, especially with a large wingspan like this, and then you just blow up. So, unfortunately I do apologize ahead of time, you're not going to see as many explosions in this video because I happened to achieve this sooner than I thought. Now here I was actually getting closer to the altitude that we were looking at, but it just wasn't going to make it. And uh, the engines cut off right around this point. And so, moving on to the other design, uh, this one I tried to uh, reduce the drag in a lot of ways is not exactly the most functional design uh, compared to what I should have been doing, but I wanted to make it prettier by removing the uh, tail and ailerons off the wings. And uh, so, um, what we did here was we were going up too steep and we wound up just kind of overshooting our target so we are actually going higher than the record altitude right now at 26,000 but I'm not gonna count this because for the main thing is our engines aren't even on so not like we can really do anything right now so who cares <laughs> but uh, uh, anyways, as far as taking off the flight surfaces, that was basically just due to the fact that the Panther engines give you the uh, good amount of thrust vectoring. So you don't necessarily need to have those flight surfaces in order to achieve the same amount of uh, maneuverability. So I mean, it's not necessarily the most uh, functional or smart engineering choice, but uh, it looks good and that's what matters, right? <laughs> So, we'll move on to the next one here. And now this one is very similar to the last, except we've replaced two of those engines with the ramjets. That should hopefully get us high enough uh, to break our record, with the ramjets increasing our speed, and therefore also increasing our lift simultaneously, so that we should be able to reach the altitude, and oh, yeah. So, like I said, uh, don't pull up too aggressively. <laughs> So again, we have the same thing as what we were just flying, just this time we're going to be smarter about it once more. Um, anyways, you don't get as many explosions in this video because I did achieve uh, this with fewer trials 
than some of the other ones, but fortunately for you, I have still flown foolishly enough to give you some entertainment. And uh, so now we're going to pull up a bit more carefully, and we have our climb now. So moving on up into the sky. And here we are coming up on the record altitude at uh, 22,000 feet right now. And uh, just gonna see how this goes. So a couple notes about uh, these kind of planes and just the design of them. Um, with these large wingspans, uh, it's interesting because, you know, I have to keep putting on the ramjets in order to go faster in order to keep generating enough lift on my, off of my wings to get uh, the ideal altitude. Um, and I kind of based it off, like I said earlier, off of the U-2 with the gigantic wingspan here as proportional to the body. Uh, but the thing is, is if you're going to have a larger wingspan like this, then of course you're also going to um, have a lot of structural problems at high speeds because you're putting a lot of drag on its body. The one thing about the U-2 spy plane is that it actually had a uh, 10, um, just a, like I think it was 10 knots window that they could fly in because if you go too slow then you stall out and you start falling from that high altitude if you go too fast, you're overstressing your aircraft and you just uh, disintegrate, kind of like what we saw taking off. And uh, so with these kinds of aircraft, um, I mean, maybe with some more modern materials and stuff, we could accomplish this kind of thing. But honestly, I don't think this aircraft could fly like this in real life. But regardless, again, it looks nice. So um, that, is, uh, that is obviously the most important thing in engineering. And so therefore... I'm going to keep it <laughs> and uh, we'll see what we can do but we're we've gotten close to it but unfortunately we didn't have just enough uh, speed to keep going because our speed started dropping right here so we started losing our altitude as we didn't get enough um, thrust out of our engines so uh, I'm gonna try something else here with um, uh, I uh, lost what I was saying. Anyways, um, four ramjet engines. Replace those Panther engines with the, with the uh, ramjets at this point. So that should be able to give us just that tiny bit of boost that we need. We were almost at the record just then. So hopefully this will be uh, what we need to get to where we're going. And uh, so trying to pull up careful. No, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, moving on. <laughs> and so, again, same thing here, just going to be even more careful. <laughs> I thought I was being careful on that last run, but apparently when you add a little bit more speed in, you have to adjust your uh, flight manual. So, uh, I know that was an aggressive pull-up right there, but uh, if you pull up right before uh, you get to a certain speed, then you don't have as much drag fighting against you. So, uh, you're able to do that kind of thing. And, uh, so we'll see how high this one can go here. And I'll go ahead and skip to the climb so you don't have to watch. So here we are up about, uh, I can't read in this small window. It was 14,000 feet, so coming up on it pretty quickly. I'm gonna start leveling out here so that we don't um, wind up overshooting our target, like what we saw earlier in the video, and also slowing down a bit because I don't want to wind up burning up either. And also slowing down helps me to not overshoot the target. And so by pitching down here, we're also putting our wings against the top of the atmosphere as we're going upwards. So it's kind of air braking our uh, vertical speed as well uh, to level us out pretty quickly. So we're starting to lose some of the air and performance from our engines though. So at this point, I'm speeding back up all the way to full throttle. And ultimately, you're getting probably about the same amount of thrust as what we had earlier in the atmosphere when there was more to work off of. But as you can see, we are getting very close here, 25, 800, 900, 
and 26,000. And that would do it. We have broken the altitude record of the SR-71. We are, uh, we still have our engines going, so we still have sustainable flight all the way at 26,000 feet. Yes, I did just take a steam screenshot because this is the first time I've ever achieved this kind of flight with only air-breathing engines, so allow me to celebrate a little bit. <laughs> and, uh, but, uh, anyways, that is, uh, that will do it right there. Good, sustainable, high-altitude flight. And, uh, yeah. So, hope you enjoyed pulling that off. And if you have any questions about the actual design, leave a comment below. I can give you some things I've learned about making these things. It is actually much simpler than you think, but here, anyways, we'll skip to this because I know you guys are disappointed that you're not seeing as many crashes in this video. So, we're gonna get on with your entertainment reel here at the end uh, with a nice, satisfying plunge into the atmosphere at full throttle so that we can also break some uh, airspeed record, maybe, as we go down, because it totally counts if you break apart and you break an airspeed record in the uh, process. And there we go. We have lost our wings with the crazy drag that we've just induced on everything. Something else blew up. I don't know what that was. Obviously nothing important. So it's just basically a missile going at 1400 meters per second right now. I wonder if this thing will be submersible. And no, everyone, you cannot fly straight into the ocean, so Sky Captain is not a real movie. Anyways, I uh, hope you guys have enjoyed that video. Um, again, sorry for not blowing up as many kerbals as the last ones. Hopefully we can find some ways to ruin their lives later on. And... Uh, Anyways, if you have any ideas for more experimentations, let me know in the comments below, and you could be responsible for the next video. And so if you liked it, comment, rate, subscribe, etc. Nonsense, so cool, YouTube ranting. And, uh, yeah, enjoy. Thanks for watching.